viewers to uh, this second episode out of 16 episodes in which we are focusing on the November 2022 science paper 2. So the first episode covered the first five questions. So let us move straight to question 6. Question A6. The following dot and cross diagram represents a compound. Identify the compound shown in the diagram. The compound is so you need to look at these ions so this is a cation which is a positive then this is an anion which is a negative so because of this positive two what this tells us the first element has donated two electrons to have a complete outer shell meaning this is from group two then uh, this element has gained two electrons to fill the outermost shell. So because it's getting two electrons, this meaning it has six electrons in the outermost shell. So this should come from group six. So if you go back and check on the periodic table, we look for an element from group 2 and an element from group 6. If you look at a magnesium, magnesium is from group 2, which is correct. Chlorine is from group 7. So this is incorrect because of chlorine. Then we have oxide, which is oxygen. Oxygen is from group uh, 6. So oxygen is correct. Magnesium is correct. So B passes. So B would be correct. Then if you look at C, because we have chloride here, so chlorine from group 7, so this is incorrect. Sodium is from group 1, so you see, incorrect, so B is the correct answer. So basically, this is how you reason to answer this question. Question A7, which of the following liquids when added to a strongly acidic solution in the correct amounts could produce a solution with pH of 7. So when you look at, at the universal indicator, the pH value of 7 means this is a neutral solution. So now we are starting with a strongly acidic solution, then we add a liquid, then we get a neutral solution. So let us look at the options, distilled water. So when we add distilled water to an acidic solution, we can never get to 7 because there will still remain the components of acidity in that solution. So the furthest that we can go is 6.90 pH because we cannot remove completely the acidity in that solution. So A is incorrect. Then when you look at a B, Ethanoic acid. When you add an acid to an acid, you are not diluting that acid. You are just reducing its potent because this is a weak acid, this is a strong acid. So B is incorrect. Then we have lime water and potassium hydroxide. Now, what is a lime water? So if you look at the lime water, lime water is the same as in calcium hydroxide. So this is calcium hydroxide. So potassium hydroxide is a strong base. Then also lime water, which is calcium hydroxide, is basically a strong base. So all these are strong base. Now, if you react this with a strong acid, a strong base, you react with a strong acid, you are going to get a neutral solution using one of these common reaction equation which is in when you react an acid plus a base you are going to get a salt plus water this is what you are going to get and this outcome this product is a neutral solution so you have between C and D so basically either C or D would be correct based on this standard D equation. So it's just a matter of whichever you go with. I believe this was an oversight that was made. 
either C or D would still be correct. So you can go for either one of these. So I would go with this one which is more clear which is potassium hydroxide because probably they just mean to say maybe limestone or just say lime itself. But otherwise either C or D will be correct because if you react for example calcium hydroxide with hydrochloric acid you are going to get calcium chloride and water. You react sulfuric acid with calcium hydroxide you are going to get calcium sulfate which is and water which is they are all neutral solution and they will give you the pH value of 7. So that's uh, the reasoning behind question 7. Then question A8 what is the identity test of the gas produced when an acid reacts with a carbonate? So we have an acid reacts with a carbonate. So from the three common reaction equations of which this is the one that we've looked at then the other one is we react an acid with a metal to get a salt and hydrogen. The third one is we react an acid plus carbonate then we get a salt which will be uh, from the acid let us say for example from hydrochloric acid it will be a chloride salt then plus we get water then plus in a carbon dioxide which is in the gas so when we react an acid and a carbonate we are going to get a gas and this gas is in the carbon dioxide we are talking about so what's the test for carbon dioxide n puts off the burning split with a pop sound this is hydrogen the test for hydrogen then relights the growing splint C turns lime water colorless D turns lime water milk so D is the correct answer the test for carbon dioxide is that it turns lime water milk question A9 25 centimeter cubic of 1.0 moles per decimeter cubic of a sodium hydroxide solution are measured into a hundred centimeter cubic volumetric flask and water added to make the solution up to the hundred centimeter cubic mark. The concentration of sodium hydroxide in this solution is so the question wants us to find in the concentration of sodium hydroxide after dilution. So the key fact is we are starting with this volume which we are putting in the volumetric flask. Then we are adding water such that uh, the new volume becomes 100 centimeter cubic. So once we have that we can find the new molality which is uh, basically molality given by concentration is given by number of moles divided by a volume in this meter cubic. That's basically what we have. So now from this we can um, use the dilution formula which is derived from the concentration formula where a uh, concentration is in the m which is molality which is the number of moles per decimeter cubic. So if you get a uh, molality one of the first solution which is in this case this solution so it will be this one multiplied by volume one which is at uh, this volume in decimeter cubic must equal to the new concentration multiplied by the new volume. So the new volume is in now this one because we are adding water until we have this solution. So we are moving from this 25 centimeter cubic to 100. So 100 is a total new solution. So what is happening is like that we have uh, this measure just uh, drawing it roughly. Then you start with this 25 centimeter cubic. Then we are adding water until it rises to this 100 centimeter cubic mark. So the original volume volume one is this one up to here. This is the original volume. Then the volume two of the total solution will be this measure. 
So we are looking for this. Given that we know this, we know this, we know that. But the trick is ensure that these are in decimeter cubic. So one decimeter cubic is made up of 1,000 centimeter cubic. So to convert 25 to decimeter cubic, which is in a volume one in decimeter cubic, what we do is 25 divided by 1,000. We are going to get 0 0.025 decimeter cubic. That's it volume 1. Then volume 2 will be uh, this new which is 100 divided by 1000. We are going to get 0 0.1 decimeter cubic. Once you have that, you know what the molarity one is. It's basically this value. So we are looking for this. So to find M2, what I do is I will divide by V this side. So we divide by V2 and V2 this side. So molarity 2 is equal to uh, molarity 1 multiplied by volume 1 over volume 2. So what is uh, molarity 1? You see this one which is 1. We have 1 moles per decimeter cubic. Then we multiply by the volume 1 which is 0 0.25 decimeter cubic then divide one volume two which is 0 0.1 decimeter cubic like that then what we are going to get is it will be just one multiply by 0 0.2 0 0.025 divide by 0 0.1 so we're going to end up with 0 0.025 because one times anything is a thing divide by 0 0.1 then when we divide that, we are going to end up with 0 0.25 uh, moles per decimeter cubic as in our new molality. So you notice that A is the correct answer. Question 18. What mass of sodium carbonate is required to make a solution 250 centimeter cubic solution whose concentration is 0 0.3 molality? which is 0 0.3 moles per decimeter cubic. So the question is asking us to find the mass given that we've been given the volume of the solution and also the concentration. So we know that concentration is given by, molarity is given by the number of moles divided by a volume and this volume should be in decimeter cubic. Then we also know that the number of moles is given by mass given divide by the relative molecular mass so we, we know what this is is 250 centimeter cubic we know what this is this is 0 0.3 molality so we can find this so once we find this then we know what this value is from uh, this then we can find this from the molecular formula then we can find the mass so the first step that we are going to do is uh, let us find the number of moles. So we convert this to decimeter cubic by dividing this by 1000 because they are 1000 centimeter cubic in one decimeter. So volume will be equal to 250 centimeter cubic divided by, by 1000 centimeter cubic which we are going to get 0 0.25 decimeter cubic. So we know what the volume is. Then let us find the number of moles. So to find the number of moles, what we do is we just cross multiply this, multiply by that one. We multiply this by that one. We are going to remain with that. So number of moles is equal to, we have this, which is 0 0.3 moles divided by decimeter cubic, which is the molality. Then multiply by 250 converted to uh, decimeter which is 0 0.25 decimeter cubic then what you notice here is this decimeter and this decimeter cancels then multiply that we are going to end up with the number of moles is equal to 0 0.3 moles multiplied by 0 0.25 we are going to get 0 0.075 moles as in the number of moles so since we know the number of moles then we can use this formula 
to find the mass. So we can find the relative molecular mass of that, which is the next step. So step two is we need to find the relative molecular mass of this, which is a sodium carbonate. So we need to go to the periodic table and look for the mass number of sodium. So when you go to the periodic table, you notice that a sodium, this is 23, then we also have a carbon here which is 12, then we have oxygen which is 16. So we come back, so we have 2, so it will be 2 multiplied by 23, because here there is this 2. Then we have 1 carbon, so it will be a 12. Then plus, we have a 3 oxygen, so it will be 3 multiplied by 16. So when we add this, we are going to end up with 106 grams as in the relative molecular mass. Then we can substitute there to find a basically the mass. So the mass now is equal to basically the multiplication of these two. So mass is equal to the number of moles multiplied by relative molecular mass. So we have a 0 0.075 multiplied by 106. Then when we use a calculator, we are going to discover that this is nothing but 7.95 grams as our answer. So when you look at uh, the options, we discover that B is the correct answer. So this is how you answer question 10 in detail. So thank you for joining me in this episode. Please join me in the next episode as we look at question 11 going forward.